today we're going to be doing a shorter version of the Ashtanga primary sequence and we're going to be focusing on the back bends. So we're going to um, do the, the back bends at the end of the primary sequence, the, in the finishing sequence. Beforehand we're going to move through and focus on our upward facing dogs or cobra depending on what you pick. I will show that to you at the beginning of the class. Um, so that we warm our back up nicely. An important point is if you have any back pain, back problem, please be super careful. You don't want to hurt your back. You can still do the class, but just don't go as deep into those curvature of your spine. And um, be really mindful if at any point you feel pain, just stop. Um, prop wise, you can always have a belt ready. Um, we'll do a couple of um, seated forward folds, so you might want to use it there and block in case you um in case we might need that so it's always good to just have those handy and if you don't have a block or a yoga belt um you can just use a towel or a t-shirt or a scarf or a belt for a bathrobe for the yoga belt and a thick book or a folded up blanket or something for the block Obviously, any pose that you don't like, any pose that don't feel good to you, you can just skip or amend or just wait for us in child's pose. And um, this is your yoga practice. If you want to just do something else than what I'm saying, if it doesn't feel good to you, what I'm saying, if you want to move slower, just do your thing. I'm just giving you suggestions. This is your yoga practice. And I hope you have fun. Okay, so Ashtanga, I am going to do the chant um, and I'm going to use my cheat sheet a little bit as well to just see that I don't miss anything. Okay, cool. So the um, opening chant, um, you can close your eyes if you want. If you want to, normally we do it standing, but let's just sit. You can place your hand in prayer and heart center just on your lap. It's, um, I find this, it's obviously there's a lot of spirituality in yoga, um, which I'm learning about and I'm really interested in, but I just really love those chants on a, it just on a basis of that, it sort of gets you a bit ready for the practice and I think it's just quite nice. Okay. Om Vade Gurnam Chana Vinde Sandrasita Svatna Sukhava Bode Nisreya Se Jankali Kamane Samsara Halala Moa Shantye Abahu Kuru Shakram Shankasikasi Dadanam Sahasra Senam Sitam Pranamami Tanjalem Om and just on that note, if you, any of you are interested in sort of the spirituality of yoga or anything like that, you can always let me know and then we could speak about that in another yoga practice again. Okay, for now, let's get up standing and start with our sun salutations. So we're going to the front of our mat. We're going to start in Tadasana Mountain Pose. So you can either have your feet touching if you want, or you could have your feet hip width apart if you find that more comfortable. We're really planting our feet down, so we're going to, as we stand here, wherever you are, lift our toes off the mat, spreading them really nice and wide like a fan, then lowering them one at a time, starting with our little toe, the fourth toe, the middle toe, the second toe, and the big toe, maybe seeing a little bit of mat between our toes. Now we're going to lift our heels and place them down, really nice front grounding. Going to tuck our perineum or pelvic floor, engage our core, really nice firm middle. Having that firm middle, engaging our core, will protect our back as we go in and out of our, I guess we fall down. And also engaging our core, engaging our glutes, engaging our that big upper back shoulders will help us in those back bends as well. We're going to pull our shoulders up back and down by putting them down in our back we're pulling the shoulder blades together a little bit opening the chest palms facing forward looking straight ahead imagine someone's pulling you by the top of the head so we're really nice and tall but we're tucking the chin ever so slightly 
so that um, we have a nice flat neck. All right, one breath here, inhale, exhale. And the next inhale, we're raising our arms up, exhale, engaging the core, folding down, full forward fold. Hands either side of the feet, maybe bending the knees a little bit. It's early, so maybe bending the knees. Inhale, half forward fold, hands to shins. Exhale, hands down, we're stepping back with the right foot, followed by the left foot in child plank. Lovely. Inhale and exhale, coming down, knees, chest and chin into our uh, eight point forwards. And inhale, first back bend. Let's all come into a cobra, untucking the toes, elbows into the body. We're lifting the chest off the mat, but the lower ribs are staying on the mat. And we're looking forward. Inhale and exhale, we're tucking the toes and we're pushing back. Downward dog, first downward dog, maybe stepping the feet in a little bit. And if you want, this is the first downward dog of the day. You could walk your feet a little bit, bend one knee, really straightening the other, trying to bring the heel down. Then changing over, bending the other knee, straightening the, the other one, trying to bring the heel of the straight leg down. You can do that walking the dog as fast or as slow as you want, if you like it at all. If you don't like it, you don't have to do this. But I quite enjoy it because it sort of helps wake up the calves. Okay, now let's come to stillness and center, setting up our downward dog, our hands are Shoulder width apart, middle finger pointing forward, pressing through the whole hand. So it's not just that the weight of our body is in the ball of the hand, but also where the fingers meet the palm of the hands, the knuckles of the fingers. Shoulders are pulling away from the ears, maybe shoulder blades pulling slightly apart. Nice flat back. If that means that you have to bend your knees a little bit, that's totally fine. Looking towards the space between your big toes, your toes, your feet are pointing forward, feet parallel, and maybe foot width or foot length between your feet. We're engaging our core and staying here for one more breath. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, we're stepping forward with the right foot, followed by the left foot on the exhale. Inhale, half forward fold, hands to shins, we're looking down. Exhale, full forward fold, hands either side of the feet, maybe bending those knees. And inhale, we're engaging the core as we're coming up with a flat back, hands overhead, and exhale, hands into heart center. Lovely, other side, inhale, arms up. Exhale, we're folding down, forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold, hands to shins. Exhale, hands down, we're stepping back with the left foot this time, followed by the right, into plank. Inhaling here and exhale, coming down the knees, chest and chin. Inhale, sliding forward, cobra again, untucking those toes, elbows into the body, looking forward. Exhale, tucking the toes, rolling back into down dog. Again, make stepping those feet in a little bit. And now just setting your down dog up yourself, pushing through the hands, looking to the feet, engaging the core. And we're staying here for another four breaths. Okay, the next inhale, we're setting the left foot in between the hands. Followed by the right foot on the exhale. Inhale, half forward fold, hands to shins. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale, we're engaging the core and we're coming up with a flat back. Exhale, hands into heart center. Lovely. Have a look at the time. Let's do one more of these and now I'm going to give you the option to jump back from our forward fold instead of stepping back. You do not have to do this. And um, I'm also going to give you the option of coming down from our plank via Chaturanga. So let me show that to you first. And then from Chaturanga, we would go into an up dog, Ardha 
So uh, what a Mukshansa. So uh, let me show you that first and then we can you can decide. Do whatever feels good. And you don't have to do the same thing every time. If sometimes you're like, I'd like to do Chaturanga and then next time you don't, that's perfect. Okay, so arms up, exhale down. In our half forward fold here, you could also stay on your fingertips now if you're warm enough. And then we're placing our hands down, bending our knees and jumping back and trying to, as we jump back, trying to be as silent in our jump as we can be. And then we're in our plank. And in plank, we're going to then, if you want to do chaturanga, rock forward a little bit onto your fingertips, just a tiny rock. And then we're bending our elbows here. We're coming down sort of 45 degrees in the elbows. And then from here, we're rolling forward into our upward facing dog. So it's plank, rock forward, come down, and then roll through. And an upward dog, the only thing now that's touching the ground for me, the back of my feet and my hands, and I'm looking to the ceiling. Okay, so, and then we would, actually let me show you that. So, so we're down dog, and then from here to jump forward as well, you bend your knees, look between the, to the space between your big, between your thumbs, between your big fingers, <laughs> and then you try to jump forward relatively silently. And if you jump forward, and you land here, that's totally fine. Like we're working, we're practicing, it's not perfection. Then we come here, pull down, we come up. <laughs> Lovely. And as I said, if you don't want to do that, step, come down, knees, knees, chest, chin, cobra. Perfect. And there's one more, sorry, a lot of talking. If you want to try chaturanga, but don't feel that the strength, you could also bring your knees down and do half chaturanga. And then into cobra or up dog, and half chaturanga is perfect as well. So really, it's your yoga practice. I am just here giving you suggestions for how to move this morning. All right, and I'm talking, sorry. Let's come to the front of our mat, lift our toes off the ground again, maybe. Whew. Okay, and inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold down, full forward fold, maybe bending the knees. Inhale, half forward fold, hands to shins, the finger to the mouth. If you want to jump back, place your whole palm on, on the floor, bend your knees and jump back. Great. Into plank. In plank, let's rock forward if you want to try chaturanga. On the exhale, we're coming down. Inhale, sliding forward into our upward dog or cobra. Exhale, pushing back. And here, staying in down dog. Stepping the feet in a little bit, maybe. And we're staying here for another four breaths. Bend, if you want to try to jump forward, bend your knees, look between the space between your thumbs. Try to jump forward on the exhale. Inhale, half forward, forward, fingertips to mat, hands to shins. Exhale, full forward, forward, forehead towards shins. Inhale, let's engage the core and come up. Exhale, hands down. Great effort, everyone. Let's do one more of the sun citations A. And then before we move on to sun salutation B, let's do a little um, upward dog. We'll come together after we've tried a little bit, maybe. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding down. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, palms down. And then stepping or jumping back into plank. Inhale, and then rocking forward. Exhale, we're coming down. Inhale, sliding into our cobra upward facing dog. Exhale, we're pushing back into our downward dog. Setting it up, stepping our feet in maybe. Pushing through the whole hand. And bending our knees, 
Inhale on the exhale, just jumping or stepping forward. Inhale, half forward fold. Nice flat back. Exhale, full forward fold, forehead towards the shins. Inhale, engaging the core and we're coming up. Exhale, hands into heart center. Lovely. Yeah, get some water if you want. Cool, so just um, if you want to come, we can come down to the floor briefly while we talk through our, um, while we sort of test our upward dog a little bit. So for upward dog, the reason why I want to tell you this is what I want you to do is, if you see me and my upward dog here, that my chest is through my my arms, so my arms are not in front of my chest like this, but my feet are actually a bit closer to my body and I'm pressing up, I'm curving through and the curvature in upward dog doesn't just come from your lower back, which um, I think is a temptation in a lot of back bends that we bend from our lower back because that's where we're more mobile, but that's also what's quite delicate. So, a lot of us might have pain in our lower back, so if you have that, then please be careful. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to get more of the bend from our mid-back and also our upper back. And if you're sort of quite far away, you don't really get a nice, um, so as you see here, my chest isn't really through my arms. And you can't really, it, you're quite compressed in your lower back. So if you, so we're in our plank, we're coming down whichever way we want, and then if we slide forward and we have our chest through our, through our arms, and we're imagining that we're almost, imagine that you're trying to push your hips through your arms as well. So instead of like just lifting your chest, trying to imagine pushing your hip bones forward too, and that way, at least I personally find that if I'm imagining pushing my, my chest and my bum sort of actually pushing through that the bend, so the curvature comes more from the middle spine as well. And um, if you don't want to do upward dog at all, that's obviously totally fine. And if you're on cobra, and again, like you're sort of like there in cobra, it's a, for me personally, again, obviously everyone's different. It's more from the lower back. So here, if you find your lower back is really compressed and starting to twinge a little bit, just don't come up as high. I'm just looking forward here. And by looking forward rather than to the ground, you're curving a bit more through the rest of your spine. Um, yeah, so I hope that makes sense. If you want, maybe take a moment to try that yourself, just place come into a plank and then you don't even have to come through chaturanga but just in plank and then come onto the flip your toes over and see how what you have to do how close maybe you have to bring your feet a tiny bit closer to your hands to get that chest through your through your arms and you can sort of see by looking down maybe a little bit how far forward it is you want to take a few moments to try that for yourself just so that as we move through the rest of the class, you feel quite comfortable with the upward dogs. Looking great, I can see you trying, that's brilliant. And obviously, if at any point gets too much, you can you could also skip the back bend, like in your vinyasa. So if you go from, if we flow through a sun citation, you don't have to do the back bend if you for a moment think, oh, that's a bit much. Okay, let's take a tiny break in child's pose now together. Just um, arms out in front of us, knees maybe slightly parted, big toes touching, arms out, forehead to the mat, and just relax here for a second, just to give our back, rounding our back into the opposite direction, little counter pose to keep our back happy. And you might have felt that um, in 
in your up dog or also in cobra, you're really working the muscles around your spine as well. So it, it, I think it really works your back. So it keeps your back healthy. At least I find that. Okay, if you're still in child pose, bring your hands under your shoulders and then gently, gently, gently push up to kneeling. And we're all going to come up to standing. So maybe bring one foot up and then come up through the sort of mic position. Great, and we're going to move to our sun salutations B. So we're starting with chair and we're going to involve warrior one. Okay, let's start again by bringing our feet, lifting our toes up, spreading them wide, lowering them down, maybe lifting our heels. Okay, and let's inhale, bring, up, bring our arms up. Exhale, pull our hands into heart center. And now inhale, let's bend our knees, let's sit down in our chair, in our Utkatasana. Inhale, arms up. Inhale, exhale. Inhale and exhale, we're folding down from here. Hands either side, feet fold, forward, fold. Inhale, half, fold, fold, fingertips to mat or hands to shins. Exhale, hands down, either stepping or jumping back into a plank. Lovely, in plank, inhale, and then exhale, coming down whichever way we want, half chaturanga, full chaturanga, cobra. Inhale, sliding into our cobra or upward facing dog. And upward facing dog, let's try to bring our chest through our arms, looking up, curving through the whole spine. You're curving over a beach ball. Exhale, we're rolling over our toes into down dog. One breath here, just for a moment, catching our breath. And now we're placing the sole of the left foot onto the mat. The toes are pointing to the front corner of the, the mat. And we're going to step forward, coming to the ball of the back foot, stepping forward the right foot in between our hands. And I quite like to stay here in this low lunge to prepare myself in my first, bird, first sun salutation B. Just stay here, you can have your hands on the floor, or you could also, also if you could try, hold opposite elbows under your, under your thigh. And what I want you to do here is try to pull, square your hips so that they're parallel to the front of the mat, to the front, like the short length of the mat. So pulling maybe the right hip back a little bit, the left hip forward a little bit, pushing into the little toe edge of that back foot, the left foot. Okay, one more breath here. Inhale, exhale, and inhale, coming up, arms circling up, and coming into a warrior one. And here, warrior one, as I said, we wanna to try to square our hips, but also square our chest, so that we're parallel to the short edge of the mat. Looking down at our chest, See if we're trying to do as much as you can or as little as you can. And if you're finding this super difficult, you could just come into a high lunge, roll into the ball of the back foot, and have your that will really help with the chest being parallel. So you could do that. One more breath here, looking great, everyone. Inhale and exhale, hands either side of the front foot, the right foot, stepping that right foot back, coming into a plank. Inhaling here, coming down whichever way you like, half. Chaturanga, Chaturanga, Cobra, and uh, Cobra, Mr. Shinten. Inhale, rolling through, Cobra, or upward facing dog, upward facing dog, chest through the arms, aiming to shine your hips through your arms as well. Only the hands, only the feet touching the ground. Exhale, we're rolling through to our down dog. Now we're placing the sole of the right foot on the mat, toes pointing forward. And we're stepping forward, coming off the ball to the back foot, left hand between the hand, the left foot between the hands. And we're staying here. Again, for a few breaths in this low version of the warrior one legs. Hands either on the ground, or if you want, you could also try to hold opposite elbows under your thigh. Pulling the left hip back now, right hip forward, pushing into the little toe, the edge of the back foot, the right foot. One more breath here, inhale, exhale. And with the next inhale, coming up, cartwheeling, shining our arms up. Again, looking down at our chest, with our chest more or less parallel, front edge of the mat. Pushing the back foot in to the mat. Looking great, really nice, everyone. If you find it difficult to bring your hands to touch, 
could also hold an imaginary beach ball. Inhale and exhale, hands either side of the front foot, stepping back with the left into plank. Inhale, exhale, we're coming down. You know, we're sliding forward, cobra or upward dog. Cobra and up dog. Imagine you're curling your back over a beach ball. Exhale, pushing into downward facing dog. Stay here for five breaths. If you want to take a break in child's pose, that is totally fine. You just bend your knees, untuck your toes and come into child pose for two breaths. If you did come to child's pose, let's tuck our toes through tabletop, push into down dog for another two breaths with everyone else. In our down dog. And with the next inhale, we're bending our knees, we're looking between our fingers if we want to try to jump. And exhale, jump forward. Great job. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, full forward fold. And inhale, bending our knees, we're coming into our chair. One more of these, arms up. Having a look at our toes, can we see our toes? We can't see our toes, shifting our bum back until we can see them. Inhale and exhale, folding down. Inhale, half forward fold, fingertips them out, hands to shins. Exhale, hands down, either stepping or trying to jump back into a plank. Inhaling, plank, and then coming down. Knees, chest, chin, chaturanga, half chaturanga. And from chaturanga, maybe coming into an upward facing dog. Inhale, and exhale, rolling back. Placing the sole of the left foot down and stepping forward with the right hands between our hands. Inhale, exhale, and inhale, we're coming up right away into our warrior one. Inhale, and exhale, we're folding down, we're moving fast. Stepping back into plank. Coming down, knees, chest, chin, half chaturanga, full chaturanga, and then inhale, uh, upward dog or cobra. And it's fine if you mix it up, pushing back into a downward dog. Placing the sole of the right foot down, stepping forward with the left in between the hands. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, we're coming up. Hands overhead. Inhale, exhale, hands down. Amazing, guys. Stepping back, plank. Last plank for a little while. And coming down, knees, chest, chin, chaturanga, half chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. It's the last one for a little while. Breathing here. Again, if you want to take a break in child's pose, that is totally fine. Stay for four more breaths. Bending the knees. If you want to jump, look between the space between your fingers and inhale, exhale, jumping forward. Inhale, half forward fold, fingertips mat or hands to shins. Exhale, full forward fold. And inhale, bending the knees and we're coming into our chair again. Inhale and exhale, straightening the legs, hands into heart center. Well done, everyone. I think. I'm assuming we're all warm. I definitely am. <laughs> okay, great. We're going to move to our forward folds and we'll do one of them today. Standing forward folds. Sorry, one second. Very hot, anyway. Um, cool, so. Um, we're coming to a forward fold. For that, we're going to bring our feet hip width apart. I'm going to show it slightly at an angle. And um, 
going to do the one if we're going to come down I'll sh if we're going to grab our big toes with our um, peace fingers we're going to place our hands on our hips opening our chest looking up to the ceiling and exhale we're folding down we're bending our knees now and we're bringing our belly and chest and ribs in contact with our thigh we're bringing our peace fingers around our big toes I want to stay here and we want to keep our chest and thighs in contact with each other the whole time. So going to inhale, we're looking, looking down, nice flat back, and then exhale, we're straightening our legs gently. But if at any point you lose that contact between your chest and your legs, just go back to where you were when, um, when you did have that contact. And the reason for keeping that contact is it protects our back. And you will feel a stretch in your hamstrings in the back of your legs if either way. Let's keep stretching. And when you're there, just staying wherever you are, looking between your legs, and then stay here for another three breaths. Breathing in and out through the nose. Now, just gently bending the legs again, letting go of your big toes. Inhale, let's bring our hands to our hips. Exhale, straightening those legs. And inhale, coming up with a nice flat back. Wonderful. Cool. We're going to be doing, um, let's do a triangle pose. So for that, we're going to step back with the right foot from the front of our mat. We're sort of stepping halfway down the mat. We're going to inhale. Our arms are at shoulder level. Wonderful. And then exhale. So if someone's pulling us by that front hand and we're folding down, you can either have, actually here, if you have a block ready, you could place the block on the instep of that foot and come into triangle like this that your hand is resting on that foot or if you don't have a block you don't want to use it you can place your hand either on your thigh on your shin or if you can grab the big toe grab the big toe with your peace fingers and we're looking up we're staying here for a few breaths Okay, we're looking down onto the front foot, the right foot here, and then inhale, we're coming up, nice flat back, we're stepping forward. And now we're going to step back with the left foot, same thing, so triangle, triangle on that side, legs about um, halfway down the mat, left foot pointing forward, right foot is pointing to the front corner of the mat, inhale, arms up. Exhale, someone's pulling you by that front hand, and when you can't go any further, you come down. So either hand on your thigh, shin on the block, or maybe grabbing the big toe. And if you want, looking up to the front top hand, or just looking down. We're breathing here. Lovely, grey triangles. We're looking up to the front foot, the left foot, and inhale, we're coming up gently. Exhale, we're stepping forward. <laughs> okay, and now let's do two of our um, wide-legged forward folds. So for that, we're stepping quite wide. About, if you lift your arms, your feet are sort of un uh, more or less under your your hands and we're going to start by placing our hands on our hips and inhale we're looking up 
and exhale with flat back, we're folding down. We're bringing our hands onto the floor. Ideally, have our hands between our feet, so where the feet are in that space. And inhale, we're coming onto our fingertips. We're looking up. And exhale, we're bringing the palms of the hand down, and we're trying to bring our, the crown of our head to um, sort of face the floor. And if you can, maybe at some point, bringing uh, the crown of our head towards the mat, and maybe touching the mat, but that is not necessary in this pose. You don't have to do that, it's just an option. Wherever we are, we're staying for another three breaths. Inhale, we're coming up, we're looking to the floor. Exhale, hands onto our hips. And inhale, we're coming up with a nice flat back. Lovely, that was look, that looked great, everyone. We're going to stretch our arms out, the shoulder level, and then we're going to bring them back to our hips. Okay, and now we're going to do a very similar thing, coming down, but we're going to hold our big toes with our peace fingers. If you can't reach your big toes, just hold your shins. So inhale, opening our chest, we're looking to the ceiling. Exhale, we're folding down, nice flat back. And now see if you can hold your big toes with your peace fingers. The thumb will rest on the, on the top of the, of the toes or on the toenail, kind of. If you can't reach, then that's fine. And you can just hold your calves or behind your thighs. Inhale, we're looking to the ground flat back and exhale we're pulling either on our toes or on our calves and again here see if you can bring the crown of your head to face the floor and maybe you can touch the head now because we're pulling we've got that leverage of using our arms breathing here Inhale, we're lifting our head, we're looking to the ground. Exhale, hands onto our hips. And inhale, we're coming up. Lovely, and we're stepping forward. Wonderful. We are going to do one balance today, one of the two. We're skipping a few poses. And for the balances, if you want, you can step onto, um, if you're on your mat and you find you're a bit wobbly on the mat, you can step onto the floor and because the, the harder the ground is that you're standing on the easier it is to balance and we're going to do hand to big toe pose so it's what it says on the tin um so if you if you find it really wobbly you could also just lift your knee and hold your knee and we're going what we're going to do is i'll just show you we stretch trying to hold actually oh actually this is where if you had a belt that could be a really really helpful prop if you can't grab your foot with your hand, you can. With my balance, you could also use the belt, or hold your big toe, or hold the knee, and then we're going to open from here to the side. We're going to come back, try to come down, chin touching the knee, and this is where I always lose my balance. Then we we're supposed to come up without losing our balance. So come up from here straight and then let go and stand here for a moment so that bending down and coming up is really tricky for the balance but it's okay if we fall it's part of the fun so decide whether you're going to hold your knee whether you need a belt let's do it together so we're starting standing on our left and let's lift our toes off the ground placing them down spreading them wide before lifting the heel so we've got nice firm grounding what helps a tiny bit as well with the balance so you have a teeny tiny bend, like a micro bend in the standing leg as you come up. Lifting the right leg off the ground and find a spot that you're looking at on the floor that doesn't move on the ball <laughs> um, to, that doesn't move to focus on. Okay, let's lift our right leg and come wherever we are. Wonderful, great options everyone. We're looking to the ground, we're staying here for three. One two, three, we're opening up to the side, wonderful, 
It's okay if we lose our balance. Another two, three. And now we're going to bring our leg forward. We're going to see if we can fold down. See, bending the standing leg here a little bit will help as well. And then coming back up, if we lose our balance here, totally fine. And then as we're up, letting go of the foot, letting go of our belt, towel, and standing here for one, two, three, and coming out. Fantastic, everyone. Let's shake out that standing leg. My bum was hurting and my calf. Okay, let's do it on the other side. So again, lifting the toes off of the standing leg now, we're standing on the right, or I'm standing on the right. If you start from the other foot, that's totally fine. Decide how you're going to do it with belt or holding the toe, holding the knee, coming up, grabbing the toe or doing whatever we're doing, and standing tall. One, finding that spot to look at. Two, three. Now opening on the inhale, one, two, three. Inhale, exhale, let's close. And try to fold down. Try bending that standing leg maybe. Try to bring your chin towards your knee. Doesn't have to touch. And trying to come up again. Amazing work everyone. Letting go of the toe and standing here for one, two and three. Letting go. Great work. Shaping off the legs. Lovely. The fun thing about this, or the good thing about what I like about both of those balances, we skip one of them, but they're both of them repeat as a floor pose later. So we get to try them without needing to worry about balance because we're sitting. So that would be quite fun. Um, right, last sort of vinyasa flow, well not sort of last, but we're going to do a couple of warriors. So we're coming to the front of our mat again. There's a bit of a choreography where we're going to be facing the back in a moment, so hopefully that will be fine. Getting into Tadasana, toes spread, heels lifted, core and perineum and pelvic floor engaged, shoulders up, back and down. We're looking up. And inhale, arms up. Exhale, we're folding down, hands at the side of the feet. Inhale, half forward, forward, fingertips to mat or hands to shins. Exhale, hands down and either stepping or jumping back. Inhale, we're applying, we're coming down whichever way we want. Knees, chest, chin, chaturanga, half chaturanga. Inhale, we're forward, coming through, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, we're pushing into our down dog. And as a tip for when we're pushing, into we're coming into our down dog from cobra or um upward dog really engage your core imagine you're pulling in your lower abs and you're being pulled back then that really helps protect my back okay now from downward dog bend your knees and jump or step between your hands we're going to stay here and we're going to bend our knees come into a chair last chair for today stay here for five Trying to have a nice flat back, no butt, 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 like, butt, butt like that, but nice flat back. Another three, two, and one. And exhale, we're folding down, hands either side of the feet, fold, fold, fold. And we're jumping or stepping back. From plank, we're coming down, either chest, chaturanga, half chaturanga, knees, chest, chin. And then rolling forward into your cobra. Really rolling through the whole back, cobra or upward dog. And then so gauging your core and pulling your bum back. Now we're placing our into the sort of the left foot down. Setting the right foot forward. Inhale, exhale, and inhale, we're coming up into a warrior one. We've done this before. Breathing here, and we're breathing here for five. Okay, and now we're straightening the front leg, and we're turning around, and we're coming into warrior one on the other side. If you have to walk your 
Left foot a bit to the outside of the mat, that's fine. Bending the left knee and coming into warrior one on the other side. Amazing, everyone. We'll stay here for another four. Squaring our hips, squaring our, our chest to be parallel to that short edge of the mat. Okay, from warrior one, we're opening our arms and coming to warrior two. So our arms are at shoulder level, parallel to the long edge of the mat. We're opening our chest to that long edge of the mat as well. And if you want, you can walk that back foot back a little bit. Warrior two is quite nice at a longer stance. We're looking towards the fingers of that front hand, the left hand. Looking down at our chest, is our chest parallel to the long edge of the mat? Making sure our knee doesn't fall in. And also strengthening, straightening, engaging the back, leg, back knee and the back leg. Another two breaths here. Okay, we're straightening that bent leg, the left leg. We're turning the, feet, the toes of the left foot around. We're pointing the toes of the right foot forward. We're coming to a warrior two on the right side, bending the right knee. Great job, everyone. Looking towards the right fingers. Get, making sure that right knee doesn't fall in, making sure the Back leg is activated, is active, and that our body is flat and open to the long edge of the mat. Two more breaths. Okay, inhale and exhale, hands either side of the front foot, the right foot. We're stepping back with the right into plank. Inhale, exhale, coming down knees, chest, chin, chaturanga or half chaturanga. Remember, you can mix it up. Inhale, slide forward, cobra, upward facing dog. I'm in cobra now. My shoulders are tired. It's okay to change it around. Exhale, pushing into a downward facing dog. Now let's come to seated. You can bring one shin forward, then come through, or you can come up to a flick through a child's pose. Well done, everyone. That was the standing part. That was sweaty work. <laughs> All right, let's. Do our, let's get our belt near us, because we'll be using it a little bit. And we're going to start in Dandasana, staff pose. So this is pretty much, well not pretty much, this is the starting point for most seated poses. So we're sitting up, straight, legs are in front of us, toes are flexed. And instead of doing our forward fold straight away, our Paschimottanasana, Pochandasana, we're placing our hands either side of our hips. Ideally, palms connecting with the ground. I sometimes wonder whether I've got a really long torso because I find it a bit difficult, but I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? And we really want to flex and engage our calves so much so that our heels lift off the mat a teeny tiny bit. It's not going to be much, might be like a centimeter. Let's do that hands down, maybe flexing those toes like crazy. And let's sit here, chin is going to chest, tucking it. And we're looking towards our big toes. And we're sitting here for three. Two. And one. Okay, let's so lower those heels, lift our chin off the chest. Lovely. I don't think you're doing much, but it actually is a pretty tough pose. And now we're going to into our forward folds, for which you can bring your belt, if you want to use the belt, around the ball of your feet. If you don't have a belt, that is totally fine. You can hold onto your thigh, your calf, your ankle, your foot, wherever you are. But wherever you hold, you don't want to round your back. You want to sit nice and tall with hinging from the hip. So inhale, let's raise our arms, or don't if you're holding your belt. And exhale, hinging from the hip, get, staying straight and holding wherever you can hold. If you have to really round your back in order to reach your feet, don't do that. And we're holding our feet. If you get to hold your feet, 
your fingers are behind on the sole of your foot and the thumb is on, on the back of the foot between at the spot sort of between your big toe and your second toe and we're looking towards our big toes inhale exhale we're folding we're holding and we're staying here for another three Inhale, we're straightening our arms, we're looking up, and exhale, we're coming to seated. Let's do one more of these, and Ashtanga, you tend to do three, where you're trying to go a little bit further every time. But if you were fine where you just were, no need to try to go any deeper. Inhale, arms up, and exhale, strike, hold, maybe go a bit further into this pose, you could try to interlace your fingers behind your feet if you can if you can't that's totally fine maybe you are holding your calves and maybe you could get a little closer to your ankles it's small things we're doing what we can do stay for another three Inhale, let's look up and exhale, slide back to seated. And from here on out, between poses, we're going to do a vinyasa where we jump back into a plank and then go plank, chaturanga, half chaturanga, knees, chest, chin, and then cobra or upward dog, then down dog, and then back to seated. If you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. If you do want to do it, let's come into a plank. Stepping back into it, inhale, exhale, coming down, whichever way you want. Inhale, coming through cobra or upward facing dog, rolling through our back. Exhale, coming into an up, downward dog. And now let's come back to seated however we can or want. Lovely. As a count pose for Paschimottanasana, which we just did, there is, um, this is reverse plank, and I'm going to show you two options. Because one, which might be a bit more gentle. So we're bringing our feet for the more gentle one. We bring our feet onto the floor, feet are bent, hands just behind us. We push up for reverse tabletop, like so. You could drop your knife back if you wanted to. If you want to go for the full pose, as it's done in Ashtanga, but you don't have to, we have our legs straight, feet to touch, hands again behind us, I would say probably like 15 centimeters, three inches or so behind our bum, and then we lift up and come into this plank. And here, um, you want to bring the ball of your foot and your toes in contact with the ground, and you're pushing your hips up. Wherever we are, let's do three breaths wherever we are. One, two, and three, and then gently bring your bum back to the ground. Lovely, well done. And if you want, another vinyasa, so bending and stepping back, coming through a maybe seated per cross legged into plank. Inhale, exhale, coming down. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, pulling back into a downward facing dog. And now, stepping through. <laughs> okay, let's move straight to Janushasana. Janushasana, head to knee pose. We're sitting, we're starting in Dadasana. So our legs are in front of us, toes flexed. And we're going to pull our right foot in. And the right foot is, the sole of the right foot is against the inner thigh of the left. Again, if you have a belt, you could use your belt. Bring that around the ball of the front foot. I'm going to sit here. Inhale, sitting nice and tall. If you don't use a belt, arms up. And exhale, we're folding down, flat back. The back is staying straight the whole time, flat. If you're holding your belt, that is totally fine. Or you could hold your calf, or your thigh even. Wherever we are, Stay for three breaths. 
the drishti, your focus point, where, you, where you're looking, what you're looking at, your gaze is going towards your big toe. Two more breaths. Inhale, we're looking up, and exhale, we're gently sliding up. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So, the Vasana, legs are out, bringing the um, sole of the left foot against the inner thigh of the right leg. If you want to use your belt, place that around the foot. And inhale, arms are up. Exhale, we're folding down and we're holding wherever we can hold, or we're holding our belt. But whatever we do, flat back. We don't want to hold our foot and round our back, chin to the floor. Nice and flat back. It's head to knee, so let's bend down. Looking towards, gazing. Gazes towards our big toe. Two more breaths. And inhale, we're looking up. Exhale, sliding back up. Placing our belt to the side. And if you want, do a vinyasa. So I generally start, if I we start in cross-legged, hands in front of us, stepping back into plank, inhale in the plank, exhale, coming down to where you want. Inhale, back bend of arch choice, back bend de jour. Exhale, downward dog, and coming back. Um, quick look, what do we do next? Mm -hmm. Let's go straight to cobbler pose. <laughs> so, soles of the feet are together. And you can have your feet as close to your body or as far away from your body as you want. It really depends on how you feel. We want to aim to get our heels as close to our groin as we can. If you have, for this it's ideal to have two blocks, but if your hips are quite tight, which is fine, it's quite normal, and your knees are quite far off the ground, you could place a block under your knees, like so, which could be quite comfortable. But you don't have to, if you don't have the blocks or if you don't want to, it's your choice. And here we're placing our fingers on the back of the foot, thumb on the ball of the foot. What we're trying to do is we're going to try and open our feet like the pages of a book, opening them like this. And the reason why we're doing this is that by opening our feet, the pages of a book, we're opening our hips. So if you want to try to press your soles, the soles of your feet together like this, you can see that your knees are automatically, if my knees are a lot higher, more away from the ground, there's a lot more gap here. But if I pull them apart, you can see that automatically I'm closing this gap somewhat. Lovely, so let's first sit here, sitting nice and tall, pulling on our feet, looking down at our feet, sitting here for three. Inhale, we're breathing in and out through the nose. Okay, and now we're going to try and do a forward fold. So we're pulling by our feet and we're trying to come down with a nice flat back. We're going to do a rounded back version of this in a moment. So if doing this with a flat back means that you're stopping quite high, that is totally fine. Don't hurt yourself by trying to come down slower or round your back yet. And what you can try here is that by pulling yourself down, maybe you're going to, maybe your elbows are pushing into your thighs and by doing that you can maybe encourage your, your hips to open a little more. Looking at the floor in front of you, maybe, I don't know, 30 centimeters something in front of your feet, six inches, and breathing here for another two. Actually, it's safe for one more. I quite enjoy the pose. Okay, and inhale, we're coming up gently. All right, now we're going to round our back. So we're going to aim uh, to get our head 
close to our toes. So we're rounding here, and you can pull on your on your feet. And obviously, you don't have to get your head to touch your feet. That's just an idea. I'm just staying here with this rounded spine, chin to chest. I'm really still pulling the shoulders a little away from the ears. You don't want to um, strain your neck. I'm just staying here for another two. And one. And inhale, coming up. Exhale, releasing. All right, if you want, let's do another vinyasa. So, hands in front of us, stepping back. Inhale, exhale, we're coming down. Inhale, sliding forward. Exhale, we're pushing back. And we're coming back to seated. Let's do Navasana. For Navasana, or boat pose, this really works our core, but also our hip flexors, and our back and um, yeah, back mus mus uh, muscles as well. So a couple of options for um, for boat, so you can either have your hands behind you and just lift your feet a little bit like this. You could also have your hands behind your knees and lift and bring your legs parallel to the ground. You could also try to straighten your legs or you could try to let go either with legs parallel or straight. But wherever we are, if at any point by letting go, you're collapsing into your back, you're rounding your back, then just go back to the previous version. Okay, let's do three of those. So we're coming up to wherever we want to be. I'm staying for three. Two. And one. Okay, feet onto the floor. Let's give ourselves a little hug here. Cosmic egg. And let it go. I like that word, cosmic egg. The yoga teacher of mine used that once. Right, let's do that twice more. So hands behind our knees. Lifting the feet off maybe. Maybe letting go of the, the um, hands. Stay here for another two. One. And feet to the ground. Hugging ourselves. Releasing. And looking up. Last one, hands behind the knees, coming parallel maybe, maybe even straight. Wherever we are, we're staying for three, two, one. And releasing, giving ourselves one more hug. And looking up. And yes, if you want, hands under our shoulders, the step in back. Inhaling and plank. Exhale, coming down his chest, chin, chaturanga, hop chaturanga. Inhale, coming through upward dog or cobra. Exhale, we're rolling through. And we're sitting down. Now we're going to come onto our backs and you might want your belt or your um, towel or whatever you're using. I'm going to lie back. I have to push to the side a little bit. Uh, lying back, and what we're doing is we're doing the same thing that we did in our standing balance. So we're lying on our backs, the legs are in front of us, but we're flexing the feet. Our feet are doing yoga as well. And we're going to inhale our right leg up. But if you want, bring, actually it's quite nice to use a belt here, bring that belt around the ball of the foot, holding the belt, or if you can reach, you could also hold the big toe of the right foot with your peace fingers. And we're staying here with the straight leg for three. As you see, it's, pretty, it's exactly all the same what we've done before, but obviously we don't have to balance now, so we can maybe see if we can pull that leg closer towards us, straighten the leg a bit more. Okay, one more breath. And what we're doing now is we're opening, open that leg to the side so that, and we're placing our left hand on our left hip because we don't want to roll, we, don't, we want our left glutes 
left bum cheek to be in touch with the ground. So that might mean that you have to lift. You can't go as low as you might want to because we want to keep that contact. Staying for two more breaths. Looking to the ceiling. Okay, and inhale, bringing that leg into center. And now we're going to hold around our calf or around our ankle. I'm going to pull the leg towards us with both hands now. And we're going to lift our head off the ground as well. The left leg stays straight and flexed. And by flexing and straightening that leg, it can be more stable. And we're pulling here. We're staying here for three. Two. And one. And now we're letting go of our head, placing that down. Letting go of the hands around our shin, our foot. And letting go. Great. We're doing the same thing on the other side. So we're lifting the left leg off the ground. If you've got your belt, bring, you can bring your belt around the ball of the foot. If you don't have a belt or you want to try and bind the finger to the big toe, hold your finger to the big toe. You're flexing the toes on the right leg. Right leg is straight. Hand on your hip. Right hand on the right hip. And we're staying here for three. Straightening the leg, pulling it closer towards us. We don't have to balance, so we can really work in this pose. One more breath. Okay, and on the next inhale, we're opening our leg to the side. And again, not too much. We want to keep the right hip, the right glutes in touch with the ground. Really nice. We're lying here for another two. Okay, and inhale, we're bringing that leg into center. We're letting go of the toe or of the belt, and we're now going to try and hold around our calf or our ankle with both hands, maybe interlacing the hands behind the leg and pulling that leg closer towards us, keeping the right leg stretched straight and flex the toes and pulling our head towards our shin and staying here for three, two, and one. And first lift, lowering our head gently Letting go of the hands around the leg and gently, gently, gently lowering that as well. We are going to bring our feet to the floor, rolling off to the side, and coming to seated. And if you want, you've guessed it, another vinyasa. Before we get to our final poses, the back bends into plank. We're coming down knees, chest, chin, half, chaturanga, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, pushing back into the dog. Up, coming down. And here I think um, it's best if I show you bridge first and then we'll do an up bridge wheel. We'll, I'll show you wheel and options there first, how to get into it. And then we'll do it together. So for wheel, we are lying on our backs, feet, so it starts the same as bridge really, feet as close as we can get them to our glutes, knees are bent, knees are pointing to the ceiling. And now we place our hands either side of our ears so that they are also pointing to the ceiling. So our elbows, our arms and our knees and our legs are making the same shape. And now we you're, instead of trying to force ourselves up into wheels straight away, we're doing it in three stages. So from here, we're pushing, we're rolling, we're curving through our upper spine first, trying to bring the, uh, the crown of our head to the floor. One. Then we're lifting our hips off the ground. Two. Now the one thing that's touching the ground is my, the crown of my head, hands and my feet. That's three. And inhale and exhale. Pushing up into wheel for number three. 
Then this will come down. For coming down, we're tucking our chin to our chest and we're gently, gently, gently coming down. Um, and the reason, so obviously be super careful here, especially as we're all doing it via video at home. The reason why when we're coming up, we're tucking our chin to our chest before we lower from our wheel is that by doing that, we're creating a really, if we're creating, if we're making it safe in case you lost hold or something, you don't want to land on your head or on an unprotected neck by creating that, making it really nice, firm in the back of our neck and our shoulders so that the likelihood of injuring ourselves is lower because we do not want to injure ourselves. Okay, <laughs> fun, but it's important to stay safe. We don't want to create problems by trying to move through our yoga practice. But let's start with bridge. And again, so feet are on the floor, hip width apart, knees are hip width apart, pointing to the ceiling. We're starting with a little bridge. And if you want to stay in bridge, that's totally fine. It's a wonderful pose. It gives you the, pretty much the same benefits as wheel does turning us around and everything. But um, yeah, just this is a fantastic option. So don't worry. Our arms are by the side of our body. And we're going to inhale, exhale here. Then inhale, we're tucking our pelvis, closing that natural curvature in our spine, lifting our hips off the ground, middle back, upper back. We're pushing into our feet, curving our spine even more. By pushing into our feet, we're bringing our chest closer to us, our uh, um, chin. You can stay here. Or you could try to interlace your fingers below your back. We're staying here for three. Okay, if you interlace your fingers, let go of that. Palms back on the ground. We're gently, gently, gently lowering down. And maybe hugging our knees into our chest and rocking from side to side. Lovely. Okay, and in bridge, um, when we come up, maybe try to not have your knees fall. You might feel that as you're up in bridge, that your knees fall out a little bit and try to have your knees point forward, be parallel. That's something to pay attention to here as well. Okay, either do another bridge, beautiful pose, or if you want to give it a go with me to get into wheel, we can do that as well. So again, feet as close as we can get them to the bum. Feet hip width apart, knees hip width apart. If you want to go into a bridge, Sajmadasana, do that in your own time. If you want to try a wheel, Shakrasana, stood together. So we're going to lift our arms to the ceiling. Hands are flexed. And we're now bending our elbows and placing our hands next to our ears. Our elbows are pointing to the ceiling. Let's inhale, exhale here. Inhale, pushing into our hands and we're curving our upper spine, bringing the top crown of the head towards the ground or on the ground. The things that are touching the floor now are our bum, our head, our hands, our feet. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, we're lifting our bum off the ground. Now our head, hands and feet are touching the ground. Inhale, exhale, we're pushing into our hands and we're coming up into wheel. Our feet, our hands are touching the ground. Maybe try to straighten those legs, looking to the floor. And let's stay here for three, two, and one. Tucking our chin to our chest and gently come down. Wherever we are, whatever we did, let's hug our knees to our chest. Rock from side to side. Okay, we're letting go of our knees. <sighs> okay, let's bring our hands, let's lift our right foot off the ground, bring our hands behind the right knee and gently rock up to seated. Wonderful. Let's leave it here. 
I was going to say to one more vinyasa, but I think we're all warm enough. And let's just sit in a comfortable cross-legged position. You could also try to do a half lotus or maybe even see if you can do a full lotus, but that's so not necessary. Let's make sure to sit in a nice, nice, gentle cross-legged. What we're going to do here is we're going to grab our elbows behind our wrists behind our back. So we're holding up our forearms, our elbows, maybe even just interlacing our hands behind our back. I'll show you behind my back just for a moment so you see what I'm talking about. So you can hold like this, you can just hold your wrists, hold your fingers, whatever's available to you. We're holding, we're inhaling, opening our chest, looking forward, and with the exhale we're folding down. Maybe we can bring our forehead to the mat, we can't bring our forward to our mat, we've got a block nearby. We can place that block in front of us and just rest our head there. And with the block, there's various options. Obviously, how you can put it, you can put it on the flat side where it's quite low, you can put it on the skinny side where it's a bit higher, or you can put it on the high, on the short end where it's really high and just rest here. By holding our arms behind our back, we're stretching our shoulders. Stay here for another five to seven breaths, slowing down our practice. Inhale, we're going to gently, gently, gently come up. Grab your block, move that to the side. One last thing, we're going to bring our finger, uh, the fingertip of our thumb and our index finger together for Gyan Mudra, for wisdom. So, place those on the knees, closing our eyes, and we're sitting here for five breaths. Close your eyes here, open them, and let's come down onto our backs for a very, very well deserved Shavasana. For Shavasana, lying on our backs, our feet are mat to hip width apart, palms facing the ceiling. Maybe pulling your shoulder blades a little bit like you're really nice in contact with the ground. Relaxing your back. Just lying here. Fingers curling in a little bit. Closing your eyes. Relaxing your forehead. Letting go of any tension in your jaw, behind your eyes, around your nose. Nice and relaxed place. Continuing to breathe gently. Connecting with your body and trying not to have your mind wander. If you find it difficult to stay present, you could count every breath. One on the inhale, two on the exhale, three, then four, and up until ten. And once you've reached ten, 
and start at one again. That might help you stay present. This final relaxation. Swasti praya pariyatanam tan Naya yena magena mahi mahi shaha Go brahmanya namastu nityam Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Slowly come back to your body. Maybe have a nice deep inhale. And a sigh on the exhale if you want. <sighs> some movement into your body, move your fingers, your wrists, your toes and your ankles. Let's bring our feet together, stretch our arms out overhead, have a full body stretch, Oof. making ourselves long and releasing. Hugging our knees into our body, and we're rocking from side to side, massaging our back, massaging our kidneys. Come on your legs on the right. Let's drop our knees to the right. Roll onto our side. Our right upper arm is a pillow for our head. One breath here. Placing our left hand in front of our chest. Pushing into that hand to gently come up to seat it. Sit here for a moment. So we do a nice big circle with our arms. Inhale, we're coming up. 
exhale, pulling hands down. Let's bring our thumbs to the space between our eyebrows, the third eye, for clear and kind thoughts. Bring our thumbs to our throat for clear and kind words. Bring our thumbs to our heart centre for clear and kind feelings for others and for ourselves. And if you want, let's bow with the gratitude to the practice of yoga and gratitude to ourselves for moving today. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here with me. Oh.